Welcome back to another Dear Shandy Bachelor Recap listeners. Hello, Andy. Hello. How are you today? Doing good. Cold. Cold, yeah. yeah it's one of those cold. days where the building just decides, you know what? Today, you don't deserve heat. Not today. And that's why you're wearing a sweater. Yeah. One day, if this podcast lasts for like 20 years, let's just say, uh-huh. we could have like a trivia night. Like what episodes with Andy <laughs> not wearing a white t-shirt? <laughs> okay, shall we get going? Recapping episode nine, Fantasy Suites, Andy. Mm, fantasy. <laughs> What is your fantasy? Whenever fantasy suites come around, I'm like, God, fantasy suites. Like, who came up with that name? How brilliant was that? It's so funny. Well, I mean, it is a fantasy in the sense that they're all so horned up at that point. Yes. That there's no other fantasy they want. Yeah. I just feel like the word fantasy, like they went so far. Like they went overboard. The suite should have something in it that makes it a fantasy. But sex is just like, I mean, yeah, there's good (laughs) sex and I guess there's fantasy sex. But fantasy sex just doesn't happen in like just a, a hotel room. Yeah, yeah. When you know it's about to happen. It happens like in a phone booth I, in the I, middle of, the, of a busy street when you have no idea it's coming. <laughs> I got to say, too, some of these fantasy suites were not as fantasy as other ones we've seen. Yeah. Like these were just sort of like nice hotel rooms. I feel like it's much more heavy on the suite and lighter on the fantasy. Yeah. These in days. the old days, there were some real fantasy suites. I mean, a fantasy suite should be something insane. It should be like an escape room with sex. <laughs> themed. It yeah. should be themed. Oh, yeah. There should be costumes. It should be hanging. like a space room <laughs> or like, you know, like a medieval room. Maybe a Narnia a suite. Oh, that's a good one. That's and a good idea. And they got to dress up? Yeah. How about a furry suite? Like it's, it's like woodland animals. They dress up like as a chipmunk yeah, or like and elves, like a beaver. Like an elephant, like a sort of yeah. Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's make it a fantasy. Yeah. I More agree. fantasy. Okay. Less sweet. <laughs> okay. All right. Shall we get going? Let's do it. All right. So we pick up in Tulum, Mexico, and we open with Joey feeling trepidatious going into this week. He's, you know, the same insecurities are coming back about loving someone and it not being reciprocated. And we get a recap now of each relationship and there are multiple fingers uttered here, Andy. And I I thought that was interesting because usually finger is our word watch word for the finale. And Kelsey repeatedly misuses Joey and I, which may be a theme in this recap. She may be the biggest offender in, in Bachelor history. Yes. Okay. So now Golden Bachelor's Susan arrives to chat with Rachel. I actually thought this was a nice touch how they had these Golden Bachelor ladies come and chat with each individual woman. It wasn't just one doing all three conversations. Yeah, I liked it. It really felt like they had curated which lady to bring to talk to which the, young they were paired. lady. Yeah. They were they were paired. And no it was question. well matched, yeah. actually. Yeah. I thought Susan was the right pick for Rachel. Absolutely. Rachel says she loves how Joey accepts her goofiness and she admits she's in love. She's working on letting herself be okay with that. She reveals both of her major relationships ended with cheating and her fear is not being picked. She feels like the guy always picks someone else over her. Susan, being the professional that she is, gives Rachel the perfect pep talk about loving herself, letting her guard down, being vulnerable. Susan is made for TV. Oh, yeah. I actually haven't looked into her history, but I feel like she has to have been on camera before, before Golden Bachelor. I agree. What what was her job? Do you remember? I don't remember. She's a school teacher or something? I don't know about that. No. Maybe. But I mean, she's so good at this. Yeah. Almost weirdly good. She's into it. She's she's embracing it. Yes. She's like, I'm going for it. Uh, Rachel's overnight date now. As she walks towards him, he says, we match a little bit. And Andy, you said, how the hell do they match? Yeah, but they have skin. (laughs) I didn't get that. I got to say, in general, I feel like people say that they kind of match more often than they actually match. Like, I think that that's an overused thing. Like, it's like, oh, that we're both wearing some variation on like white. And so we match. No, you don't. Yeah. That's Sometimes just, you do. But no. That, that's strange small talk. Oh, yeah. Andy, are yeah. you suggesting something? There's so little to say that he had to go with something that not only is boring, even if it's true, yeah. but it wasn't even true. Joey in his ITM says, Rachel brings out a side of him no one else does. When he says she brings out a side of him no one else does, I think that's like platonic guy friend energy. Yeah, but it's being forced into fantasy suite energy, yes. which it's not. He brings her to a cenote, and you said they love cenotes. Yeah, and it's becoming a theme now. They jump off higher and higher ledges until she hurts hurts her jaw. We think that she might have jumped in with her mouth open or something. Yeah, I'm thinking the open mouth. Ooh, this made me... You gotta oof. tighten up everything when you go in there. <sighs> this I, made don't, me I, don't, I don't like jumping from high Yeah, things. we agreed that we think this activity is overrated. It's never... I've done it. Like, I think the highest I've jumped, honestly, is probably that first level. Okay. I'm afraid of heights. So for me, that first level is like a 30 meter platform. Yeah. So I've done that. 
And I have to say, there's nothing fun about it. Uh-huh. It's just scary. And then you're falling and then you hit the water pretty hard. And it usually doesn't feel good when you hit the water. Yeah. And then you're like, okay, I'm it. glad that's over. Yeah. But none of that was fun. Yeah. Like with a roller coaster, there are points where you're like, okay, this is really uncomfortable and yeah. upsetting, but it's also kind of exciting and exhilarating. Yeah. I feel like the main thing after you jump off a really high thing is that you're like, oh, wow, I didn't get hurt. Yeah. I didn't get hurt. It's like, that's, yay. that's the fun part. <laughs> it's like all intact. Yeah. And in Rachel's case, she did get hurt to the point where a medic has to check on her and then they take her to the hospital, sort of ruining their final date together yeah. I, should i say that i just said it's their final date well i mean <laughs> <laughs> they may get coffee in la one day <laughs> that totally slipped out uh in the hospital everything looks fine and rachel's takeaway is somehow that she needs to open up more she's standing in her own way yeah. uh, we found this date a little trying and it's not because we don't like rachel i actually really like rachel she's yeah. just very cool and cool yeah she's a friend yeah but she's also like there's a coolness to her well she's yeah cool temperature yes cool cool yeah and i find her relatable Mm -hmm. but i just this this being like you said forced into a fantasy sweet situation just felt rachel says she feels bad this is in the evening now she feels like she ruined it she was waiting all week for this date joey says it was a freak accident why feel bad rachel wasn't a freak accident it jumped into (laughs) water from a high place Rachel's it's like I was driving 150 miles an hour down the highway and then I just spun out. Totally free. Rachel says she fears opening up too late. Andy, you said even this, she's telling him, not showing him. Yeah. It had a bit of that tour guide energy. She reveals all her serious relationships have ended because of being cheated on. The situation triggers her fears around that. Of course, Joey says all the right things, but we still weren't buying it. She breaks down in tears here. This is the most emotion we have seen from her. I think this emotion was her knowing that it's not her. Oh, you think so? Yeah, I think she just finally is like, okay, this is not happening and I'm sad. Yeah, he gives her all the reassurance and he gives her the fantasy suite card. Andy, you said, want to bang? <laughs> Do we think they banged? No, I think they almost banged and then they thought better of it. That's my guess. Thought better of it. Yeah, I think they both, I don't think there was banging. I don't picture Joey being the kind of bachelor who would bang someone he was about to send home. I think that Joey's a gentleman and I agree with you. As they head off, Andy, you asked, wait, they're going to the fancy suite right now? And I said, yeah. And you said, oh, I forgot how this works. <laughs> what did you I forget? I did. I thought there was more fanfare. <laughs> the next morning, he says he appreciates how vulnerable she was, how much she opened up. He saw a different side of her. It was good to see. Joey in his ITF says he's falling for Rachel. He knew coming into this, he needed her to be more open. She was so honest, so open last night. That's all you could ask for. I got to say, even this ITM felt very interviewee. Yeah. Like, these are the things I should say. And even that, he was like, and she was so vulnerable and honest and open. What more could you ask for? Uh, like I, that? Like, who says that? I don't know. Something about this felt a little rehearsed you know, and, it's, and forced. It's like one of those regional restaurant commercials. Yeah. It's like a local restaurant. They're interviewing people as they come out of the restaurant. Mm-hmm. And they're just saying, they're like, what I really like about Joey's Italian food is the really great Italian food. <laughs> You're like, eh, I don't know if I buy that. I am imagining those Broadway show commercials. Oh, totally. Yeah. That's true. Same thing. <laughs> okay. So now we have Kelsey A. in her ITM. She says, I'm excited to see what the day has in store for Joey and I. <sighs> Andy, you said, damn it. Golden Bachelor's Leslie arrives to chat with her. Also a good matchup. Also, it was very clever because I think that the powers that be knew that Kelsey was feeling pretty confident. And they're like, let's send her the runner up from Golden Bachelor to make her spiral and feel really insecure. So Kelsey tells Leslie, Joey and I's connection has grown so much. She talks about her dad and her dad, quote, seeing Joey and I together. (laughs) It's just the hits keep coming. Andy, you said she might be the worst ever at this. Yeah. Leslie reveals she lost her mom at 24. It impacted her whole dating life. And so they sort of bond over having lost their mothers. Kelsey and her ITM cries saying Leslie thinks Kelsey's mom would be so proud of her, which was really sweet. And Leslie says that on Golden Bachelor, she wishes she hadn't been so confident. She wouldn't wish it on her worst enemy. It was heartbreaking. She basically tells her to keep her guard up. 
while everyone yeah. else is being told to keep their guards Great down. Advice. Don't <laughs> she, be vulnerable, whatever you do. She says she now realizes that she could have her heart completely broken. This is Kelsey mm. saying that. Oh, it's mm. close, close mm. to a heart broken, mm. but there was a completely in between. But yep. we do here get Word Watch One because she says in her ITM she did get her heart broken. Now we had some debate over this. Yes, because this is technically two words, not right. one. But it's the phonetics. Yes. Gotta go with the phonetics. Yes. Kelsey's overnight now. Joey says, I know there's a real love between Kelsey and I. <laughs> I hate, it's 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 contagious. I think maybe they suit each other this way. Do you want to explain the so and so and I in case anyone thinks that this right. is correct? Do I have to? Okay, no. It's <sighs> I is a subject of a sentence. I has to do something. The real love between Kelsey and I means there's a real love between Kelsey and a giant inanimate I. The letter I. <laughs> but like no matter what form it takes, Kelsey and the letter I. Have an, a love that's just unstoppable. <laughs> Written eye, physical eye, metaphysical eye. There's a cute moment when she says her hair is crazy. He says one of her best features is her crazy hair. Yeah. Don't tame the mane, he says. <laughs> she says she thinks about him, how hard it is for him to share his feelings with one girl and then do it all over again with the next girl. I really loved this. I love it when a contestant observes the experience that the lead is going through and doesn't just wonder about how they feel about her you know it's like oh that must be difficult for you it shows empathy yeah she's putting herself in his shoes and he seems to appreciate this i thought that was really cute they swim and snorkel and we wonder why there was not black boxing yeah because she get preferential treatment yeah there was some like underwater footage and i mean i don't think it was needing black boxing but considering some of the stuff they black box on uh, paradise i, I, I was, was like oh. very close to grabbing pearls on that underwater scene <laughs> clutching pearls Andy. oh sorry <laughs> in the evening i'm sorry to say i didn't like this dress i'm only mentioning it because i think people would want me to mention it so you know what this dress was like it was like she was on bobby flay beat bobby flay oh. that's the cooking show right yeah I and, love and they're like flay. today you will have to prepare a dress with tarp <laughs> Paper clips and a cat toy. I think you're thinking of Project Runway. Oh, okay. Andy, you said about this dress, it looks like a mistake. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't like this dress. Yeah, it looks like something went wrong and she's like, I don't have time. I got to go out and shoot this scene. And they're like, okay, just go. No one's going to notice. And I feel bad saying this because Kelsey actually has great style. Yeah. Like, what happened with this I one? loved her look when she first arrived. She was doing B-roll in the hotel. She was wearing like a white uh, t-shirt, like a basic white t-shirt, yeah. oversized with a pocket, and then this cute satin blue mini skirt. Like, it looks great. Yeah. So I'm not criticizing her style overall. I just did not like this dress. No. Now we get Word Watch 2. Kelsey says, if it's not me, I would definitely be heartbroken. There you go. They marvel at their ease and comfort with each other. He says he never wants his time with her to end. They talk about remaining hopeful. And Joey says he struggles to be open because he's afraid it can be taken away. She gives him a pep talk here about how he should be vulnerable. I thought this was really cute because it was sort of a fun role reversal. Mm. You know, there were these two moments in this date that I really appreciated. One was her imagining herself in his shoes, imagining how hard it was. So that already is a bit of role reversal because usually you get the lead doing that and like come comforting the contestant and then here too where he's like worried about being rejected and she's like no you should be vulnerable like since when do you see the contestant saying that to the lead that's true yeah. it was really sweet actually yeah, yeah i agree those two moments i was really like huh yeah. is it kelsey there was a few huh moments in yeah. this one yes kelsey officially says she loves him and he says he hasn't had a doubt about how he feels about her he's falling in love with her mm. he's wanted to stay it for a while and she is elated he gives her the fantasy sweet card and she says i accept that's cute. They make out in the pool, and I appreciate. I I wrote this down. It's just something. It was a girl observation. She had her hair in a messy top knot, mm-hmm. and I so appreciated this because I never understand on these reality dating shows when girls get in the water and they have long hair and like the ends of their hair are in the water, but they're not getting all their hair wet. So it's just the ends, and the ends are like floating around the water. I'm like, put your hair up. Why are you doing that to yourself? <laughs> My long haired ladies will know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. I just never understand. I'm like, just put your hair up. I, I, I trust you. So, Andy, I see you've got a little bottle from CB Distillery in your hand. <laughs> Is what I have in my hand. <laughs> I'm telling you, I take this every single night Mm -hmm. and I sleep like a baby and I don't wake up groggy. Yes, this stuff is amazing. You guys have heard me talk over the years about my journey with sleeping. And I have found for myself personally that if I 
have a couple of different products that work really well for me, shh, being one of them. I change it up every couple of nights. That's my perfect way to sleep and shh is so good. It is. I look forward to the nights where I get to use that one. <laughs> is just one <laughs> dropper full that you hold on your tongue for 45 to 60 seconds mm-hmm. and then swallow and enjoy a restful night's sleep. You love putting that stuff under your tongue. I do. Yeah, I, I can always tell because you're just like... <laughs> And we're such huge CB distillery fans. Look, we get a lot of CBD brand. Like, I think it's a podcast thing. CBD brands like to advertise on podcasts. They do. So when we say that we have gotten CBD brands come across the Dear Shandy desk over the years, we are not exaggerating. We have turned down so many CB distillery made the cut. We love that they are made with the highest quality, clean ingredients, no fluff, no fillers. Shh is not the only <laughs> product they have either. <laughs> Yeah. So we also love their, oh, which is a stick that you put on sore spots. Mm -hmm. And also the, ah, Mm -hmm. which are gummies for relaxation. And let me tell you, these are my special treat. I particularly love these. When they say relief and relaxation, Mm -hmm. they are not exaggerating. In fact, when we first tried these, when they first arrived, this is before we vetted CB Distillery. This is what we tried first, the ah. And you and I were both like, whoa. Like we noticed a difference. A lot of CBD stuff, I don't notice a difference. I'm going to be honest. And it's not just us. They have over 2 million happy customers and a money-back guarantee. So we have a 20% discount for our Shandy. Visit cbdistillery.com and use code Shandy for 20% off. That's cbdistillery.com, code Shandy, cbdistillery.com. So funny story, Charlene. Uh Uh-huh. I was speaking with a lady friend of mine. Okay. And she has a young son. And that young son does not have cozy earth sheets on his bed, but she has cozy earth sheets on her bed. Oh, no. He won't sleep in non-cozy. Oh, wow. He won't sleep in his bed anymore. (laughs) So she had to get him cozy earth sheets because he was sleeping in her bed every night. You know, I wanted to say that he's spoiled, but also he's just smart. Let's yeah, be honest. He has good taste in sheets. He does. He has good respect for comfort. Comfort, because cozy earth sheets are made with viscose from bamboo. You've heard us talk about these sheets for years. Do you think Do you think we would still be talking about cozy earth sheets if we did not genuinely love these sheets? Every time I get into that bed at night, it's like a cloud. I'm like, oh, yeah. Plus, they're cooling, temperature regulating, so you sweat less at night. And so also the sheets over the years, I mean, we've had these sheets for years now, they don't yellow. Mm. I feel like the sheets kind of think they're superior to me because (laughs) they should be yellow by now. You know, I can't blame that kid. No. Because if I had access to cozy sheets when I was his age, what is he, five? Yeah. I also, I mean, come on. He's a smart kid. You know what that kid has? Good taste. Yes. You know who else has good taste? Oprah. Wow, that was a great guess. (laughs) Because Cozy Earth, various Cozy Earth products, not just the sheets, have been on Oprah's favorite things list for five years, five plus years now. The sheets, the jogger pants, the waffle bath towel bundle, they know what they are doing. Also, I have to mention this because this is the first time we're doing a Cozy Ad since we spoke with this friend, but we have a friend who worked with Cozy a couple of years back, and he said that they are a wonderful company. Like he had nothing bad to say about the company. Do you think a company that makes these products wouldn't be wonderful? No, that's true. I feel like it's like Santa's elf shop. (laughs) Elf shop? Is it called an elf shop? I don't don't think it is, but you know what I'm talking about. (laughs) So if you've never tried Cozy Earth, we've got awesome news. You can save up to 35% on Cozy Earth right now. Go to CozyEarth.com slash Shandy and enter our promo code Shandy at checkout for up to 35% off. That's CozyEarth.com slash Shandy, promo code Shandy, CozyEarth.com slash Shandy. The next morning, they are super cute making breakfast together. Kelsey and her item practically cries from happiness. He reiterates that he's falling in love with her and... They, you know, they, there's a lot of making out. She's up on the kitchen counter. They have yeah. the kitchen counter make out scene. And I got to say, she's so gorgeous without yeah. makeup on. I mean, Kelsey's always so gorgeous, yeah. but she reminded me with no makeup on of the little girl from the Grinch. Oh yeah. Is it Cindy Lou? Cindy Lou. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. She just looks totally. like her. That's a compliment. You're a mean one, <laughs> Mr. Grinch. Good. That's too low. No. You're a mean one. You're... You're, uh, you're a mean one, <laughs> Mr. Grinch. That was it. Good, good. Dumb. You're a something, something, huh? <laughs> you're dun 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 It sounds like the Canadian National Anthem, Andy. <laughs> As they part ways, we were like, oh, is he picking her? 
Is he uh, picking Kelsey? I, don't know. I, I am really on the edge of my seat with this season. I don't know. I don't even know if they slept together. I'm not sure about it. What do you think? Oh, you don't. Oh, not sure. Not 100 percent sure. The one person I really think he slept with was Daisy. Well, there's no question. They have so much sexual chemistry, oh. the two of them. Kelsey. Kelsey, there's like such a wholesomeness. I know a lot of people think Daisy's the wholesome one. I, I do think no. Daisy's wholesome. Kelsey's you know, Christmas one. tree, farm, all these things. I Kelsey's understand. Kelsey's the wholesome one. Kelsey is the wholesome one. There's a a girlishness to Kelsey that yeah. is still holding me back from thinking she's the one. I don't know. She's not like matching Joey at that I agree. place. But that's, I don't know. We could be wrong. Like, I'm really on the edge of my seat. I'm totally okay with being wrong because I think he would be very happy with either woman. But, you know, I think one woman would survive being rejected better than the other. I'll mm. save it till later. Okay. <laughs> Everyone knows who it is, though. Okay, we get Word Watch 3 here where Kelsey says in her ITM, Leslie said I could end up heartbroken. Mm. And now we move on to Daisy. Sandra arrives to chat with her. Again, a great matchup. <laughs> <laughs> She's the best. <laughs> Who doesn't love Sandra? She's the best. Daisy says the way Joey treats her has completely changed her life and she looks at herself differently. When she hears herself saying this, she says that she thinks she's in love with him. And Sandra advises her to be open, give it some sexual oomph. Men like that. Yeah, they do. <laughs> she's right. She says Daisy has a beautiful mind and spirit. I really thought these two connected. Mm -hmm. Like Definitely. they have a similar energy, a similar yeah. uh, intellectual side to yeah. them. I just really liked them Perfect together. Pairing. Daisy in her overnight now as she jumps into his arms. Andy, you said Lululemon? Why didn't they blur it out? Are they paying? Oh, I don't think they're paying. Are so think they're just so famous that they're like, just who cares? Oh, you think that they were gifted Lululemon? Well, they just, usually they blur out brands yeah, that they're they, not getting paid from. I'm wondering if it was too small. They didn't bother. Oh, okay. Well, I knew it was Lululemon. I'm a guy. I shouldn't know that. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's an interesting thing to think about. I have no idea. No black boxing, no blurring no, out brands. No. As they're about to take off for the day, she says, wait, one more thing. And then she goes in for a long kiss mm -hmm. and the porn music comes on. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she's giving that uh, sexual oomph that Sandra told yeah. her to do. And now as they ride an ATV together, we get word watch for Kelsey at the hotel expressing fears. She says again, Leslie says she did get her heart broken. Mm -hmm. When Daisy and Joey chat, she says her family loved him. They joke that he can read her mind. And we still think she matches him the best. Yep. It's a wavelength thing. Yeah. I don't know how to describe it. It's just what I, and I can't help but project, right? Like what they share, the dynamic they share, the banter they share, this sort of, there's like an intellect level that they share. There's no that question. That I would look for in a relationship. So I can't help but be like, yeah, that's, I like that. No, but I think you would look for it. And I think Joey is showing that he wants that. I'm not just thinking about myself here. I mean, I think I'm, I might be thinking about yeah, myself. I mean, maybe, it's hard not to. Are. Like, it's hard not to look for what you would look for. And it's hard to, like, you know, we don't know Joey. In fact, Joey is still shrouded in a lot of mystery for me. And I think that he's like that in real life, I'm now realizing. So it's hard to know exactly what he's looking for. Meanwhile, with Charity on her season, I felt very early on that it was, you know, Dot and like, that's yeah. correct. Like, I think that's something Charity would want. Yes. Joey in his ITM says Daisy makes him feel so understood. When he kisses her, he feels whole. They shower outside and have a hot makeout. And in the evening, she says she's an emotional person. And he says, let's get them all out. <laughs> There's an extremely cute moment where she begins to say she didn't know how this was going to go. And he teases her about this. It's like, oh, yeah, you weren't sure you were going to like me. You weren't sure I was going to like you. You had all these whatevers. And, sh and then they laugh about this. And then she says... I forgot what I was going to say. That was so cute. I loved this. Isn't that great? Instead of just saying one of the lines, like the stock line she can pull out anytime she wants. Yes. She's just like, oh, I don't remember what I was saying. It's so natural yeah. to say this. It's so natural. Like, I, I hope 
this carried the same weight for other people. And maybe people are listening and they're like, so what? But I really think that that shows such, such a level of comfort with each other. It doesn't have that rehearsed feeling. You know, we forget what we were going to say to each other all the time. And it's often funny yeah. because you're like, you ended up laughing about something on the way to the thing you were going to say. And then you're like, I don't remember what I was going to say. And then you're like, well, you ha, know, ha, 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 ha. Well, you know, it shows, it shows comfort with the fact that you have human imperfections. Yes. I love that. Yeah. It's like, I'm a human. I'm not perfect. And it's funny sometimes. Yes. She's great. I'm uh, into Daisy. I love Daisy. Daisy says, I was crying to Sandra the golden bachelor lady <laughs> again amazing she says she's been shut down in past relationships and he says he has insecurities too <laughs> the golden bachelor lady <laughs> you know that was so natural it was so great yeah it was so great i can't even put my finger on it me neither but we both laughed out loud and rewatched it it was so good. It was almost like she was like calling her the same way you would call someone who like just stands on your street corner yelling to herself all day. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the corner lady. <laughs> she says she's been shut down in past relationships. He says he has insecurities through this too. A fear that someone falls in love with Joey the bachelor and not Joey the person. And she starts to tear up. And he says, what? And she says, I don't know. I'm just really thankful for you. Aww. Daisy in her ITM says he's opened up parts of her she forgot existed. She tells him he's changed her life. Falling in love with him is fun. Mm. He says he is falling in love with her. It's been building for a while. He apologizes for blurting out. I feel the same way at the tail end of her hometown last week. I thought that was really funny. Yeah, that was funny. And he gives her the fancy sweet card. She accepts lots of hot making out and ugh, they're kissing. Mm -hmm. I'm still, you know. It's so fascinating how differently people can watch this season. And that's what makes it so exciting because some people are like, no, the kissing with Kelsey is better. No. But it's to not. me, the well, it's, I guess, subjective because I not think subjective. the it's kissing objective. with. <laughs> it's not. You have to, you, there has to be some people need to be disciplined in this world. <laughs> There's nothing subjective about this. The kissing with Daisy is obviously and objectively and scientifically and mathematically <laughs> better than the kissing with Kelsey. I'm not saying that the kissing with Kelsey is bad. It's no. fine. It's totally fine. The kissing with Daisy is obviously on another level. I find the kissing with Kelsey oscillates between like girlish pecks where he's kind of going there for a kiss and she's like peck and she like pulls away. Yes. And kind of like cutely like she'll go Mwah, the like that. And then once in a while, I maybe when cameras are further away, like they'll have, you know, against a tree, they'll have a pretty hot yeah, make out. Yeah. But no. I feel with Daisy, there's just like Disney. a slow drawn oh, yeah. out, like they're both but you enjoying feel the heat. it. You feel I the feel temperature the heat. goes up in the room. Mm -hmm. And even that scene in the fa the fantasy suite where he's kissing Kelsey, where she's she's sitting on top of the counter. Yeah. And he's kissing her. That's like the sort of the quintessential hot kissing position. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And even that I was just watching. I was like, eh, it's not doing anything oh. for me. But Daisy, any kiss, it doesn't matter. Even when she, even when it's contrived, you know, she's like, okay, I just want to kiss now. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, she got me. Yeah. That's a good kiss. Okay. I mean, I agree, but a lot of people do not. Right. It's the next morning now as they chat and eye gaze. Andy, you said, oh, they had some sex. Ugh. You really think that oh, they hooked un up? Unquestionably. Okay. And you think it was good? It was solid. Okay, so what man's perspective? What about this gave away that they had sex? I don't understand. I don't. I don't know, but I know they had sex. I can't put my finger on it. Okay, I'm a hundred. I would bet an amount of money that would leave us, you, you know, in a very desperate situation. Please don't do that. <laughs> Okay, that's so interesting. I feel a little weird speculating whether or not they had sex, but I also feel like it's the fantasy suite. Like, what are we supposed to do? Yeah. Like, come on. Yeah. We're not rising above it here, no. at dear Shandy. So. No. Meanwhile, Kelsey seems to be spiraling further back at the hotel. She keeps going back to what Leslie said. Lots of Franken biting here, but I think the gist is the same. I mean, Kelsey clearly was either manipulated into or spiraled enough that she wrote a card to Joey. Mm. Uh, Word Watch 5 here, where once again in her ITM, she says Leslie was completely crushed and heartbroken. So truly, I think all five out of five of these heartbrokens were about Leslie. Yeah. <laughs> Poor Leslie. <laughs> Poor Leslie. Oh, man. Oh, dear. Kelsey in her ITM says she needs to talk to Joey before the rose ceremony. She writes him that note, leaves it at his door. And there's a voiceover where she says she would rather leave now than have her heart completely Ooh. broken. 
And Joey returns now to his room and reads the card. It says, we need to talk. Uh, and as Joey seems to be upset over the idea of Kelsey leaving, we agreed, Andy, this felt extremely produced. Extremely. First yeah. of all, the the letter was a dead giveaway. Number one, she's right. I mean, like, this is so obvious. What do you mean giveaway? Giveaway of what? Giveaway that it was produced. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So first of all, obviously, I mean, this is, I, I'm explaining the obvious, but they're, they got a camera like six inches away from her writing hand as yeah, she's yeah. writing this letter. And secondly, and more importantly, you wouldn't say we need to talk in the letter. You would say, can we talk if this was in any way real? Uh huh. You oh. wouldn't say we need to talk because we need to talk is a passive aggressive. Why are you sending a letter that says we need to talk? Oh. That makes no sense. Uh, you say, can we talk? Yeah. Is it okay if we talk? Do or, you mind if we talk? Or meet me at the yeah, meet, watchtower exactly, at midnight. At midnight yeah, which we've right. seen before. Yeah. Yeah. We need to talk. Yeah. No, Everyone, no one wants to hear we need to talk. No one ever wants to hear we need to talk. I don't want to hear we need to talk when it's about eggs that we need to buy. <laughs> I never want to hear that. No, it's a really good point. And now that you mention that, it really feels very out of character for Kelsey of all people to have yes. written those four words like that. Like it, it feels too aggressive. You know yeah. what I mean? It feels too confrontational. Yeah. And I do think that when she went to his room, she was hoping to talk to him. Like, I don't think she had fully intended to write the card. Do I think she was sent to his room when producers knew that he wasn't there? Absolutely. They wanted to have the whole card thing and maybe she was told what to write. But I agree. The whole thing felt very like contrived and I mean, it ends with a cliffhanger now. Well, Joey basically starts to spiral on his end, uh, thinking, oh, maybe she's leaving. What does this mean? And it ends with a to be continued. I mean, to me, this is not a cliffhanger. No. We do not think Kelsey's There's, leaving. Could, how much do you want to bet? Ready? How much do you want to bet? What? I'm going to put another. Uh, whatever money I have left over after the Daisy sex bet. Okay. I'm riding this <laughs> on this bet. Okay. There will be, at some point in that conversation, tinkly music that starts playing. Oh, absolutely it's gonna start with a like suspense uh uh-oh music and then at some point there's gonna be a pause where she's like i just really care about you and then the tickling music will start 100 percent. and what's the point of this why are they just trying to create like what what i'm not sure what the objective here is well to be honest this is concerning me slightly because i'm i i don't want to say concerning me i want him to pick who he picks and who he it's wants it's concerning to. me too because yeah, it makes this me could think only it could be, be that they're trying to throw wool over the fact that he picks kelsey yeah usually and i don't like that it's been too smooth sailing with kelsey and so usually you need this bump in the right. road on the way because when i first saw the preview for that note writing mm-hmm. i thought it was going to be daisy yes that makes more sense but now i'm thinking why are they trying to take our eyes off the ball of kelsey yeah like, is he picking Kelsey? Is that really? I mean, look, it's possible. I mean, I want him to pick who he picks, right? Like, I, that's it's not like I would have an issue with him picking Kelsey. I just always feel these things are unnecessary. I actually think it's more powerful for it to be completely smooth sailing and you have no idea. Yeah. I don't know if the wool needs to be thrown over our eyes. And then this is- Unless it's a double psych. It and, could be. The, and we think they're pulling the wool over our eyes, but they're actually not. And it, he actually well, does pick you, Daisy. You know what? This is a good point. Because we're in now like what, the 78th season of the show. <laughs> yeah. It's getting to the point where they have to start doing double sides. Yes. But the thing that did, and I know I'm I'm falling for it a little bit, but why was Joey seemingly so upset? Is this, is this, is he acting or is it getting to the point now? Like, I, I just, what's your take on that? Because mm. he seemed visibly upset about this. Yeah, but I also think that they made it seem worse hmm. than but, it. But okay, let's just say it was really bad. Let's just say she was like, I'm leaving. If I was picking Daisy mm-hmm. or if I was right on the fence and someone's like, I'm leaving, I'd be like, sweet. It makes my decision yeah, easy. Yeah, but we have to remember his big insecurity, right? Like if one, let's say he's got his final two in his mind and he's trying to debate between each one so and then debating. one of them leaves, it's sort of like, oh, I only have one left. Like that biggest I, fear is happening. But you're, you're, you're telling, you're giving me your opinion now in what you said. Yeah. You think that he's still debating. Because I don't. I just don't picture Joey being the kind of guy. I'm I'm really giving him a lot of credit. I mean, lots of bachelors do this. He told both of them that he's falling in love with them. Like, why do you do that? I thought he was going to not utter the L word until he had picked someone. So you think he's going to make a game time decision? Really? (sighs) No, I mean, I don't know. I just, I'm trying, I'm giving him a lot of benefit of the doubt because I just 
considering what he went through and how I would think that he doesn't want to hurt someone, that he would not say he's falling in love with two women unless it were absolutely true and he really didn't know what he was doing. So you are saying he's making a game time decision. I don't really believe in that on this show, though. I'm just like, I guess I respect him so much that I'm like, oh, he really must not know. Do you know I must I think? be a fool. I'm a fool for believing I, that. I think it's been Daisy from day one. But then why, like, why let Kelsey ride so high? Well, there has it's to be cruel. a second place. When in Bachelor, seriously, when in Bachelor has the Bachelor iced out the second place? Almost never. They always say they're falling for both of them. They yeah. always make it seem like they're both really in the running. Yeah, yeah. Once in a blue moon, you get one where it's like, okay, this is really, he's he's pushing the limit. Yeah. But this always happens. It does. It's been Daisy from day one, okay. in my opinion. All right. First date. To be honest, this episode made me lean a little more Kelsey. Me too. For a couple of reasons. But it made me lean 5% Kelsey yeah. as opposed to zero. Jenny Kane is a sweater I like to wear. Do, do. It is the best sweater anywhere. <laughs> I, I quit while I'm not ahead. I love how, how many beats sweater got. Yeah, yeah. Great freestyle. It's true, though, Andy. Your Jenny Kane sweater. Look at it. So luxurious. And look, at it just looks rich, doesn't it? You want to know something? When I watched the video back of the last time we, we talked about Jenny Kane, uh-huh. I was so inspired by this sweater that I want to paint this wall now because the wall doesn't do this sweater justice. You're right. We're thinking of painting that wall. Yeah, this wall needs to be dark. It needs to be classier. Isn't it so cute that you normally always wear a white V? But it was the Jenny Kane sweater. We've called Jenny Kane, I've made it clothes. And I mean, wow, inspiring painting walls. That's pretty big. And speaking of white or cream in this case, (laughs) this sweater, every time you put this on, it just feels like you're a boss lady. Mm. Like I feel like I have to watch out for you. (laughs) You've made it in a way that, that makes me feel <laughs> intimidating. a little bad about myself. I mean, as you know, I have the sweater in three colors. They know what they're doing. Their colors are fantastic. The fabrics are great. And they just go with everything. And they're so light. It's like, I forget I'm wearing anything. And it says something that we've been advertising Jenny Kane for quite some time now. And we're still talking about the same sweaters. Yes, because they understand the art of less is more, of simplicity, minimalism. Yes, so find your new uniform at JennyKane.com. Our listeners get 15% off your first order when you use code DEARSHANDY at checkout. That's 15% off your first order at J-E-N-N-I-K-A-Y-N-E.com, promo code DEARSHANDY. Let getting dressed be one less thing to worry about. Okay, so Andy, that brings us to your A game. Who is your winner? Daisy, always Daisy. I think this is the fourth week in a row. Wow, we're big Daisy fans. You know what's fascinating? is how there are people out there who don't seem to like Daisy. Why? People say that she's boring. Daisy's I'm like, are we watching the same and show? And Kelsey is so exciting. <laughs> I don't know. And I like Kelsey too. But to me, there is no comparison. Like Daisy is electric. She's intuitive. She's mischievous. Yes. She's, she's mischievous. quirky. Yes. You know that there's a hell of a lot more quirk One, where that came from. When she, she's off camera, the quirk goes up 20 times. I, she's I really boring. like her. boring. Daisy's boring. I, what I show see, are they watching? I don't know. Who's exciting? Which one's exciting? I am. Uh, Please. I know. You know who's exciting? Sandra. Yeah. You never know when she's going to fart. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so why does Daisy win a game? Because Daisy says everything right. I can't pinpoint anything. Yeah. She's always saying the right things. She has the right... She's the right expressions. Yeah. She knows how to hold on loosely. Yes. She just does everything right. Follow Daisy's lead. She's a good dater. For she's someone so who went to, went into this with, you know, some insecurities, she's got game. She's just, she's okay. just perfect. Okay. So now we have our word watch, Andy. There were five yeah. heartbrokens. <laughs> And how many correct guesses? Only 13. Ooh, yeah. exciting. Yeah. And and I just want to add one little thing here. Oh. So a lot of people over the years, now I can say that, over oh. the years of yeah. this podcast, have said that we should have like as the word watch, the word like. Oh, yeah. And okay. <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> they say like play. a lot in this show. I ask you this. If I use the word like as the word watch, do you think that my life would be easy counting the likes? <laughs> Number one, I, I, I sense that you don't care for my well-being. But number two, no one would win. 
There is literally yeah. no chance <laughs> that anyone, even if our viewership was a hundred million people, yeah. no one would guess the number of likes that are uttered. That's like so the, let's stop the it's like the thing. gumball thing. It's like, guess how many gumballs are in this large jar? It's like too many. Well, yeah, the gumball machine was the size of planet Earth. Yeah, we're never doing like. No, it's never we, happened. We, in fact, aim for words that we think are... You know, where it's going to be interesting. It could yeah. be a lot. It could be few. We're, we're never choosing like. It's yeah, never happening. It's insane. And if you want to do, if you want to volunteer to count it, then go be my guest. <laughs> okay. So our winner is Carla Johnson. Congratulations. You are the winner of $100 to spend at one of my favorite Etsy shops, Furano Studio. Please email us by this Friday at midnight to claim your prize. And Andy, do you know what your word for next week is? Always the same. And actually, it's not for next week. It's for two weeks from now. Yes. We have a very exciting giveaway. Yeah. I mean, it's the finale giveaway. It's the finale giveaway. We, we like to line up our big giveaway with the finale. And okay, so Andy, two weeks from now. So not episode 10 where it's women tell all and a little bit of the episode where we see that Kelsey decides to not leave because we all mm. know that's happening. <laughs> okay, so for the finale, what is the word? Finger. Ooh. Okay, so if you would like to enter the Shandy Word Watch and have a chance to win a prize, then you will guess the number of times the word finger will be uttered in the finale. So that's not next week, but the week after that, assuming it's the week after that, I yeah, think it is. Think it is. The finale, yeah. okay, yeah, the finale. When, when it ends. The last episode. <laughs> okay. And if you guess correctly, you will be entered in a draw and one name will be plucked and that person will win... Our grand prize, a, a Lomi, our electric countertop composter. I'm pointing at it right now. We love this thing. You know, they're a long time sponsor of ours and it is amazing. You put in your food scraps, your food waste, and with the push of a button, it turns your food waste and scraps into soil that you can then sprinkle on your plants, or you could just even throw it in the garbage and make one little difference in the environment because actually throwing out all this food waste over time becomes methane and lives in a garbage bag and is just so bad for the planet. I would say it's it's on par with the life-changing events such as getting a pet. I mean, we do refer to it yeah. as, as our pet. And also a $500 value. Five hundred dollar value. Decent price. Yeah, amazing price. So yes, be sure to enter. You have two weeks to enter this one. Okay, let's move on, Andy, to our predictions. Who do you have in first? Daisy. Correct. Do I have to say it? <laughs> oh, you don't want. You don't even want. I don't to. want to say it. You don't want to waste your breath. I don't it. want to say it. It feels uncomfortable to say something so obvious. Oh, you're making a point right yeah. now. Okay. Yeah, we both think it's Daisy. But interestingly, when I think about it, I do think Daisy is the person who would survive best being rejected. Yeah. Not better than Rachel, because I think Rachel knows it's not her. But out of Kelsey and Daisy, you know, the way Daisy speaks about this experience, she's like, you've changed my life. Like, you've altered my perception on things. Like, you've changed how I view myself. Like, I think Daisy's already gotten probably the most she can get out of this experience. You know, may, maybe she'll end up with a ring on her finger. But Kelsey, meanwhile, it it feels like more of, like she's more in, like her whole being is in it. While Daisy, there's more like, I'm, I'm my own autonomous person while Kelsey's like already merging into Joey. Does that make sense? Yeah. And maybe Joey wants that. It's possible. Some I, people want that. The Look, the, the one remaining question mark is what does Joey want, as you said? Yeah. I don't know exactly what Joey wants, but mm -hmm. I'd be damned if Joey doesn't want Daisy. Okay. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. So we both think Kelsey is, will be second. And I think Joey wants Kelsey. Yeah. We but he doesn't want her in the same way. Yeah. You said before that he wants to want Kelsey. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think he's extremely charmed by Kelsey and I think he's really attracted to Kelsey. Yeah. Oh, man. I mean, it's fun. It's fun when we don't know. We really don't know. Okay, and so we both think Rachel is going home. Is there any chance Rachel doesn't go home? I don't think so. 5%? 5%. I'll give it 5%. I, the only way I see that happening is if he wants to protect the feelings. That's the thing. Yeah. It would be an artificial choice. Yeah, like we think it was last week, actually. Yes. And I did not expect to go in this direction. I mean, I had Kelsey in my top spot for a long time. The second I saw Kelsey, I thought she was going to win. Yeah. And then I saw his date with Daisy. I'm yeah. like, no, I believe in Joey. I believe it. The reason I'm picking Daisy is because I believe in Joey. Oh. I, it's a, I'm picking Joey. Yeah. I'm putting my money behind him to make the right choice. 
Oh, don't say that. He's going to make the right choice for him, Andy. No, he's going to make the right choice for me. <laughs> All right. I think that's a wrap. Yeah. If you enjoyed what you heard today, you know what we will ask of you. And that is to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, follow us on Instagram and TikTok. Leave us Apple and Spotify. Podcast ratings and reviews. Tell your friends and generally do all the things you would do to support a podcast you enjoy. Thank you so much for tuning in and we'll see you next time on Dear Shandy. Bye-bye. Dear Shandy. Oh my God, it's so cold in here that my nose is running. <laughs> Good. <laughs> okay.